I, I just want to say this because I want to see how it sounds. Uh, Governor Stacey Abrams just walked in. <laughs> Creflo Dollar has never failed to disappoint. Creflo Dollar made news a few years ago when he asked his members to buy him a $65 million private jet. I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. The current ministry plane is no longer usable. We need your help. And I ask all of our partners globally to get on board with Project G650. When questioned and confronted, he denied asking people to fund his private jet campaign. Creflo Dollar asking his members for six, five million dollars. I ain't never asked you for a dime. To be clear, Creflo is free to endorse whoever he chooses, but he just revealed who he really is and where his allegiance lies. So, uh, so you already know what to do, right? How many of you have already done it? Big time. Make it happen. Do what you got to do. And, and we're honored to have you here with us this morning. Amen. Make no mistake, Creflo is a liberal who values politics and popularity over biblical truth. We've recently published several videos about Creflo Dollar and his false theology. See the link in the description. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. Some people have defended Creflo, claiming he is a faithful Christian preacher. When people show you who they are, believe them and don't make excuses for them. Creflo Dollar does not care about biblical truth, which is evident again in his endorsing a woman who viciously attacks the sanctity of life and the institution of marriage. This woman knows how to play her deceitful game so well. When she wants to get votes from Christians, she quotes the Bible, and, as you might expect, out of context. And in an act of cruelty that the good Lord warned us about. If you read the Bible, there are at least two stories of making sure that we multiply loaves and water, that we create wine. I'm not talking about what we're going to drink. But the Bible is filled with parables about how we're supposed to feed and take care of one another. And yet on the day when we are deciding our future, they have made it illegal to get water or food in line. How dare they think that we are so craven and so gullible that a glass of water will change our hearts. The cruelty of that act should be spoken aloud every single day. And Brad Rafsenberger and Brian Kemp are the architects of 2022 voter suppression and don't let them forget it. I, I was recently reading the, the book of Lamentations. And it's an interesting five books. When you, when you read the five chapters, it's about being under siege. It's about Judah being under siege and being told there isn't enough for everyone, so you are going to have to starve. Starve of food, starve of opportunity, starve of freedom. But the book of Lamentations is about reminding us that even in siege, we have an opportunity to see the future. That we have the chance to rise up and have more. And voting is how we do that in a democracy. Over the next 23 days, we can decide who we intend to be. Do we want to serve each other or do we want to serve those who would keep us subservient? For me in my house, I plan to vote. And when she wants to court the liberal voters, she reveals who she really is. She even goes as far as suggesting that abortion can solve the inflation problem. I would assume 
maybe incorrectly, but while abortion is an issue, it nowhere reaches the level of interest of voters in terms of the cost of gas, food, bread, milk, things like that. What can a governor, what could you do as governor to alleviate the concerns of Georgia voters about those livability, daily, hourly issues that they're confronted with? But let's be clear. Having children is why you're worried about your price for gas. It's why you're concerned about how much food costs. For women, this is not a reductive issue. You can't divorce being forced to carry an unwanted pregnancy from the economic realities of having a child. And so these are, it's important for us to have both and conversations. We don't have the luxury of reducing it or separating them out, but we also have to talk about what a governor can do. Some may see this as an attack on a woman, particularly a black lady. But keep in mind that this is not a black and white problem. It is a case of a quote-unquote Christian pastor publicly and unashamedly embracing someone who promotes sinful practices. You know, when you look at that perspective, what Stacey Abrams is saying, be afraid, be so afraid, you want to get abortions first, it's more important to get an abortion than it is to pray, than it is to unify, come together, solve the problems of America together. And so when people are afraid, they will make decisions even to taking the life of an innocent person. And so this fear mongering that Stacy is promoting is not helping. And so when women are scared or frightened or don't know where the next meal is coming from, it's very unkind to suggest, make sure you abort your baby because yeah. otherwise you're gonna starve to death. That's kind of what she's saying. And that is really frightening. I'm very concerned about that perspective, very concerned. Yeah. This particular topic has meant a lot to me for a long time. Uh, partly for personal reasons. My mother uh, became pregnant with me when she was in, in high school. And had it been 1979 versus 1969, um, her options would have been a lot different. And when I hear people talk about ab abortion and the importance of abortion and, and, and why it's important for women to have that option, the, the women that they describe almost always sound exactly like the woman who gave birth to me in 1969. And so I've, I've had a profound um, understanding of the importance of this topic for a long time. Because we're also a state where maternal mortality is number one and black women are three times more likely to die than the most vulnerable white woman in the state. Where infant mortality, we are number six in the nation and it is black babies that are dying most often. Stacy fails to mention that more black babies die in this country due to abortion. And you know, she's not the first person to tie abortion to the economy. Janet Yellen did right. that very same thing a few months ago. And at the time, Senator Tim Scott wrote an op-ed about it and said, if abortion is our first and best answer to ensure that women in low-income families can thrive economically, the United States has reached one of its darkest times in our history. The claim is simply false and echoes the egregious arguments made in the early 20th century by Margaret Sanger in support of the eugenics movement. If this woman truly cares about the blacks, she should be fighting against killing black babies. Essentially, she is perpetrating Margaret Sanger's eugenics agenda. I couldn't watch the Democratic National Convention. I, I'm, I'm so grieved by their celebration of abortion. Uh, we've been targeted since the onset, but it was before Planned Parenthood um, and Margaret Sanger's Negro Project. We've been targeted by abortionists. And now to see black people flock to a party whose platform and history has been dead set on their annihilation boggles my mind. The fact that Stacey Abrams mentions the name of the Lord while at the same time ignoring the word of the Lord is disturbing. The Bible makes it clear that God fashioned us in our mother's wombs. A man and female may conceive a child, but God is the one who formed that child. Every single cell, every bone, and every organ, no one, according to God, has the authority to harm what he, God, formed without having to answer to God on the day of judgment. For you formed my inward parts. 
you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verses 13 to 14. In the United States, um, on record, is 1.5 million abortions a year. Every third baby conceived is murdered in the womb. Our nation and others are murdering a whole generation of humans in mass infanticide. Forty-three percent of all women have an abortion, and 47 percent of abortions are repeats. It's legal to do to a child what you might be arrested for doing to a cat or a dog or certainly an eagle. How did we ever get here where we just massacre infants in the safest place in the womb, where we literally go in there and kill them? How did we get to this place? Unquestionably, Creflo Dollar crossed the line. To endorse a politician who stands against biblical truth in front of his congregation is wrong and ungodly. Creflo needs to repent. 